Hey guys, Myron here. Welcome to Fursuiting 101 Part 5. This is fursuiting safety and honestly, if you're gonna watch any video, watch this one. Fursuiting safety is so, so important. So before you get into suit, follow some of these tips, follow some of these rules. They should make sure that you have a really great time Make sure that you have a lot of fun and that you're in the least danger possible. So the first thing I'd suggest that you do is make sure that you have your out, have your safe place. At a convention, this could be a headless lounge, this could be your room, this could be a corner where your friends are. It doesn't matter, as long as you have a place where you can walk over and pop your head off and cool down if you're not feeling so well, this is really important to have. It's really important. The second thing is to know your limits and don't exceed them. If you know that you start to feel a little bit woozy after about two hours, Maybe only suit an hour and a half. Don't push yourself because that'll end up hurting you. And that's not anything that any of us want to see. We don't want to see a fursuiter fall or something happen to them. So as you're suiting, start to figure out what your limits are, what the signs are that you might be getting tired or hot or exhausted because it'll help you determine when you should stop suiting, when you should go to the headless lounge, when you should get a drink of water. And on the topic of water, make sure that you stay hydrated. Hydration is really important because sweat is what keeps you from passing out due to heat exhaustion. Whenever you go into the headless lounge, and I recommend that you go at least every hour, at least, maybe even a little more than that, make sure that you have at least one cup of water. That's what I found personally is a good amount because it's not so much that I have to go to the bathroom within 30 minutes, but it's enough that I stay nice and hydrated. Furthermore, if you can, try and drink lukewarm or cool water. You don't want cold water because when cold water hits your hot body, it can actually cause temperature shock, which can make you feel lightheaded, nauseous, and not very good. So avoid the ice water if you can. Obviously, if that's all you've got, Drink it, but take small sips. Drink it because that'll give your body time to warm it up and that'll give your body time to prevent the temperature shock. Now, someone who can help you with remembering when to hydrate, when to take breaks is a handler. Handlers are super, super important. In a convention setting, you can usually get away with not having one because the whole phantom can be kind of your handler. But if you're ever out in public at all, have one handler, maybe even two handlers. They can keep all the crazy people away. They can hold water bottles for you, hold food. They can make sure that you're safe and tell you, hey, you've been suiting now for about an hour. We should go take a break. You should go take your head off. Let's go to the headless lounge or let's go to that corner of the park where no one is. Very important. Another thing is if you ever stop and kind of, and you feel like mm, maybe I should be done. Maybe I should get out of suit. Get out of suit. If you're even having an inkling of a thought that maybe you should be done, Get out of suit because that probably means you're starting to hit that exhaustion barrier. There's been a few times where I've been suiting and I'll go, oh, maybe I should stop. And then I'll see someone having fun and I'll go, you know, have fun with them. And I'll get back to my room and just like pass out on the bed. So if you're at that point where you're thinking about stopping, just stop. It's not worth it. Furthermore, if you have any, any symptoms at all of heat exhaustion, nausea, dizziness, blurred thought, blurred vision, wooziness, anything that might indicate that you might be succumbing to heat exhaustion, don't even skip a beat. Wherever you are, stop, plant your feet, take off your head, zip your suit down as far as you can while you can still walk, and get somewhere where you can stand in front of a fan, you can cool down. You need to get out of that suit as quickly as possible, because if you're feeling those feelings, you might be 15-ish minutes tops away from collapsing, and if that's the case, the paramedics will be called, you will be cut out of your suit, you'll be out $1,000 plus the hospital bill for whatever your situation is. Breaking the magic is totally worth your safety. So if you are feeling sick or nauseous or heat exhausted at all, just get out of your suit. Do yourself and everyone around you a favor. Get out of your suit. I cannot say it enough, get out of your suit. Now with all of those tips in mind, I just want to reiterate how important fursuit safety is. Safety is number one in almost all regards of life, and when you put yourself in a situation like fursuiting where you're doing something very extraneous, very physical, in an environment where your body is not comfortable, your body is basically screaming that it wants to get out, you need to be very safe. In the same way as a construction worker wears his hard hat, and his safety vest, and he follows all these OSHA rules, you need to follow the rules of fursuiting. So I cannot stress, I cannot reiterate how important all of these safety situations are. Be safe, be fluffy, stay lovable and stay living because uh, I, uh, 
I want all of you to have a great time suiting, and it's really important to me. So, if you like this video, you know what to do. If you know other fursuiters who might be newer to this, please share this video with them. Safety is so important. But until the next video, the next series, or the next time, I've been Myron, and I will see you guys later. Thank you.